feelings are a combination, perhaps, of pressure and release. Like at the end of a breath. Like breathing. I make a move, and then I have to let go of it. And at that time, my whole body relaxes and takes a breath. And then I make another move. Because it's in the letting go that you actually establish the form. And a rhythm is established, and it's very similar to the rhythm of breathing. And you are breathing sort of life into a lump of clay. is such an alive thing that on other wheels I think you're sort of paralyzed from the waist down all you're using is your arms and I like to get involved with the whole body and this wheel offers that to you it's not hard I like to throw slowly the only time that I have to work a little bit is just when I'm centering it so I feel the pressure from my toe come up my leg up my back and into my hands as I make a movement I can relax the whole body and open gently. I don't like fast things, maybe fast cars, but, but the wheel should just move slowly. The clay is so receptive and willing. And then you get involved in the spiral, going around and around and around and around. Twice a year, I fire up the wood fired kiln, the anagamma, and this is the most exciting time for a potter when you finally take all your ware and put it into this ancient, ancient Japanese kiln. Many people come and help, and they come from all over. And it takes me three days and three nights just to fire it. Over the three days in the beginning, it's uh, just warming up gently and the ash is depositing sort of like light snow on the shoulders of pots mostly because it won't adhere to a straight face, but it'll, it'll sit on the belly of the pot and the shoulder and on the lips of pots on all the flat areas. And at first it, it just sits there and then as the temperature rises, it starts to fuse. It starts to combine with the clay and fuse and make glass. So what's happening is the flame is applying the glaze as it moves through the pots. It weaves its way through all this barrage of pots. And as it sneaks through, the ash falls and touches it and stays. I left Australia and I came to live here and built this pottery. And over the years, almost every summer, one or two people come and work. And I don't advertise in books or magazines, but there's, you know, we have a network and we... And so I, again, it was springtime, I was looking for somebody, and a woman from Finland was in Vancouver, and she'd just come back from five years in Japan, where she had done a 
traditional apprenticeship with a master. It was in the south of Japan, in Bizen. If I stay here too long, I become greedy and dissatisfied. And I go to Asia and I realize how wealthy I am. I mean, I have a kingdom. <laughs> you know, I come to a piece of land that has a forest that builds houses and fires kilns and keeps you warm, soil that is rich and feeds you, uh, lakes full of water that you can drink. Uh, I mean, it's, it's incredible. The kiln seems to draw out of the woods the enthusiastic pyromaniacs, you know. So it, they come. Eric and Sue that came this morning, oh, fire people, you know, Zev, all these people. That okay, so doesn't matter. Oh, the first fire is built in the throat. If this was the kiln, then we build a throat onto it here. But this Which is five this. bricks. We've closed the door and left a top opening stoke hole. And then we've built a tunnel here, five bricks long and five bricks high, and we'll build a fire right through there into the mouth. And we keep that for like 18 hours like that before we start the top stoking. And we don't want, give me a tooth, uh, one of those things. Yeah, okay. We don't want the flames to enter beyond the throat, just three inches beyond the throat into the mouth. To preheat the air, for the secondary stages of the firing and to preheat the kiln at the very beginning. Gently, 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 because there are pots just three feet away. And if there's too big a fire, those pots will crack. There's a magic that happens all around the kiln, a very special energy and tension, which is contagious. I was telling you about to preheat is done about as much as it can now. So we open the top mouth. It's going to be hot. And get it off. about the sticks not all the way in just three crisscross yeah. just three now and don't look in anymore that's it
eight is further bent. But it's not true reading, is it? Because, because cone eight, the glaze would be shining. No, it's no. quite dark in the back. And it's still quite dark in the back. Yeah. It's dark. like the natural weather cycle, you know, uh, we'll pick it up with the evening breeze, you know, and start pushing. And then at midnight we might start side stalking. And then at dawn we'll finish. The problem is keeping going at the end, too. You're just so damn tired. So, so tired. You just have to keep going. Pace yourself in the early stages of the firing. Don't rush, don't push, because at the end you're going to have to push and push and push and push. This is my eighth firing, so I only know a little, you know, and I, it's a sense that you have to develop and trust. Stoking through those holes, Chris. Well, I would have liked the front to be a little hotter before we start stoking. You want to feel that if the front goes any further, it's, the pots are all going to stick together. So you've got to stop. And I don't feel we have to stop yet. I don't feel that those pots are dripping. And I want to see them drip, so... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's coming. It's coming. We just have to be a little more patient. People don't realize how much other work is involved in in making the pot. You know, when you're making the pot uh, on the wheel, it seems that it just happens like that and then and that's it. But there's many, 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 many little steps that happen beforehand. And in Japan, this particular pottery has grown under a mountain that has the clay. It evolved. It wasn't brought there. The pottery grew because the clay was there. Yeah. I'll pull a draw trial of um I'll work with it out. I can I very hot. Well the burning. So we lost that one. We'll try again. I'll just the burning. I'll just stoke him. Stoke. <laughs> oh. I don't remember this being so difficult. wants to say it's too. You say the front. Oh, we can spell oh, off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, one on each side. Yeah, take your pick. This side. Okay, <laughs> go. Oh, is it time now? now? Yeah, we'll get it organized here okay, in a little while. Okay, we'll put the gum boots on. Keep the comfort. Okay, Sherry, now just, um, you can see the pots in there, right? Yeah. So you just want to gently put in these sticks and just keep feeding just them Just a second. In. First you want to clean this of dirt, okay. of earth. Yeah. So I think what we've yeah, done yeah, since yesterday is push that heat yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Instead of just in one spot, you know, it's gone around every pot. It's gone into the pot. It's gone into the floor, into the side. That was my biggest fear the last time I was oh, side. Yeah. Inside and, you know, you wait a week before it opens yeah. up. And I was, 
you know, waiting. That person who was inside, who was bringing all the pots up from the side, I was just waiting. For someone to say, oh, no, it's yes, uh, the whole rose falling right. over. <laughs> oh, it's got a stick stuck in it. Oh. <laughs> it's got Sharon's fingerprint oh. on it. <laughs> It's tiring, it's exhausting, actually. But it's kind of hypnotic, too. That's about good. That's very good, that's very good. Is it time to stop? You can have one more bite. Lots of nice shine. Yeah, the walls are really nice. The walls are the same temperature as this. Yeah. Just let it be for one week and let it cool naturally. I believe you get a stronger pot that way and perhaps a stronger pot or two. the door a wicket This one. 
You see how it has a really straight line of ash? Mm -hmm. It's because it was in the throat of the chimney where the ash is constricted and traveling really fast. And so instead of sprinkling lightly, it gives a straight cut Shh. like that, you see? And mm -hmm. then let's look for another one. Oh, this one was on the second step where oh. we threw the charcoal. Yes, yeah. And the charcoal is trying to burn so it pulls the oxygen out of the pot. It only pulled it out of half the pot. There's still oxygen there. But here there's no oxygen. It's trying to burn. And you get these blues and oh, greys. And uh, then we'll rub it and wash it and some of this stuff will come off. It's interesting because I have all that movement but also a need to have something solid. And the, the pots seem to give that to me. They come from the earth and they are transformed by the fire and used in food. And that's why I live here, because what I do here seems to me very real, you know? Building the houses, making the pots, finding the earth, getting the trees, planting the garden, and then sharing all this with the people that come here. A lot of people that come and work here, come and live here, and the customers that come here. And I try to connect them to where I'm connected. 